Nico Colaleo. There we go. Welcome to Reanimates. Thank um, you. Thanks so much. Ollie and Scoop specifically, like where does where did that come from? I mean, that sounds like a vague question, but like, was there like a direct inspiration or were you just like, you know, this just seems like a really good natural dynamic for two characters to have? There's kind of two answers. Um, one, the why did I come up with them? And it mm-hmm. was in uh, 2014, Nickelodeon was having a, a pitch program where anybody it was invited to pitch. And um, I said, sure, why not? Um, I got to come up with, but I don't want to, sell any characters of mine currently that i own um um so uh they wanted and they still do to this day they want um they kind of want a duo they want basically a spongebob and patrick Mm -hmm. um one more grounded one not necessarily dumber but um uh (laughs) sillier or like you know the crazier one maybe um if it's uh, a human it has to be a kid and um if it's an animal it can be whatever age but um have like a childlike you know personality so mm. like spongebob you know he can he has a job and he can drive a car uh but he's he's still a kid at heart you know uh so uh that's pretty much what they wanted and so i said okay you know all those credentials um, I'll just come up with a couple characters. Uh, I didn't really have any characters like that at the, at 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 the at the time that were mine. So and so I came up with them in like 15 minutes. I was like, okay, <laughs> who are my two favorite kinds of cartoon characters? Um, cute girls, funny animals. There you go. Um, but what's the hook? You know, there's got to be always got to be a hook for everything. And I just thought, what if um, what if she's the only kid in the entire world? What if she's the only human in the entire world that can talk to cats? Oh, and then it kind of spiraled from there. Like, oh, and then because she can talk to cats, she gets to go on all these crazy adventures in this society of cats that humans don't know about. The ironic part is that over time, uh, you've got a kitty too. Um, <laughs> yeah. Over time, they became, uh, they they went from characters I invented specifically to pitch and not care about to my two favorite characters because Mm -hmm. over time I I just started making more stuff with them and the more I worked with them and created with them the more I was like okay you know yeah these are my favorites now that's how I came up with them and and also kind of the reason I came up with them I, I then pitched to Nickelodeon I pitched them to Cartoon Network Netflix over the years and um by 20 oh and then and then a DreamWorks project called too loud happened so i was busy with that cartoon and those characters for a few years and then once too loud was over i uh was like well i gotta keep working on something of mine because now i'm used to it and if i don't i'm I'm gonna go nuts then i was just kind of looking at slightly older characters and then i remembered ollie and scoops from like five years earlier i was like oh yeah you know hey i've saved up enough now i've got the crew from too loud i've got the artists and the animators I'm tired of pitching them and I've saved up enough. Let's just, let's just make episodes. Um, and then, and then we did. And then the more episodes I made, the more I really connected with them. And I realized that, you know, they weren't there just to sell and I really loved them. So uh, they, they, they became my favorite, my favorite characters. And um, to this day now we've made, you know, 10 episodes and, and change a short, some holiday songs We've got even got merchandise at this point mm. and it's a little fan following. So yeah, <laughs> it, it, it really worked out. <laughs> well, so how how did my parents, um, Jeff and uh, Barbara, get um, get involved? Like, yeah, there's there's a bunch of like sort of guest stars on the on the the series, but that's a, that's a cool get. But how did they get involved? And did the characters or the cameo like were the characters written for them, or did you have this couple of characters and thought, I know exactly who I want for that? Sometimes, sometimes it's one way, sometimes it's the other. Um, I know they they usually say never never write a character with someone in mind. I don't know. I I've just heard that. I'm not exactly sure why, but mm-hmm. um, I don't know. It seems like all the guest stars and special guest voice actors I've had they always seem to work out so I've always just kind of as soon as I come up with a character I'm like oh you know what I really think that this person would would fit that character well um and I was I'm just always you know a fan of reanimator and from beyond and um I followed them both on uh Jeff was on Twitter at the time but mm. you know uh, they're both on Twitter and everything, and uh, Barbara's on Instagram too, and so I was just like, hey, you know that'd be 
that'd be pretty cool to have like a little you know i've got these these um i've got this character the creepy girl that ollie meets in the previous episode and then she's going over for a slumber party and i was thinking oh well we'll, we'll probably have to see your parents um you know and then just who should be our parents and who's like a horror duo you know that would be mm -hmm. cool to have and i just thought of them and that was instantly like yeah hey that works and then i reached out and uh they they said yeah <laughs> I, i've i've gotten pretty lucky um almost everyone i've reached out to has said yes i've only gotten one no in the entire all the characters and the and the characters that are in episodes that haven't even premiered yet the one no was Weird Al, but it wasn't him. It was his manager saying no. Yeah. Um, I don't think his manager even showed him and even let him consider. But he's I, I think he's just such a busy, busy, busy guy. But um, yeah, every, everyone else has been like totally on board. And I don't know. I, I don't know what makes this little indie show suddenly like appealing to, you know, cool <laughs> big names but uh it, it's really worked out um it's been really lucky for me so jeff would presumably be an old hat when it comes to recording because he's done so much voice work um yeah. in the last you know 20 years odd so like you know i assume that that people like that probably don't really need much direction like they're fairly just like i just reach out to i i just think of actors and reach out to people that i'm a fan of i'm not like you know i don't need to have a Chris Pratt, you know, in, in Ollie and Scoops. I just, uh, that that's not really my style. I think of the shows and movies that I grew up with. And, you know, I'm very much an 80s kid and a 90s kid. And um, that's just the stuff that I watched. So the, I, I want like really awesome character actors that have just been in really great things. People that I really appreciate and, uh, you know, have a soft spot for. In terms of acting and everything, um, off the top of my head, I don't, I don't, think he needed much direction um he it was funny he had one stipulation when i was talk when i was scheduling everything with the um with his uh manager and everything um they were just like hey yeah uh jeffrey's totally in he just requests that the character doesn't look like him like he doesn't want a cartoon <laughs> version of him and i never found out why that was but um i was like yeah sure the character doesn't look like him at all um the character's kind of like a gomez adams adams family kind of a kind of kind of a couple of parents you know hmm. um they're just like really in love they're very macabre and weird but they're and they're they love you know they both they both work at a they're both morticians and um um pretty you know spooky and kooky a dynamic duo and uh they're really good people at heart <laughs> and uh yeah, yeah. I, I don't remember um having to give him much i just told him i just told him he's kind of like a gomez Ad, adams kind of guy and it's and the relationship of the parents are like you know gomez and morticia and that's really the only direction i had to give him and he kind of went from went from there no that you disgusting abomination Stop! i made you Apologies for that unsightly scene. Science is a magnificent, albeit occasionally horrifying, mistress. <laughs> yeah, the, I definitely got that from from the characters, like um, the Gomez and Morticia vibes of like couple goals, because these guys are like, you know, they're they're weirdos, but they're yeah. nice and they and they like each other. <laughs> uh, how 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 nice it is to have a married couple on. Uh, you know, in a, in a in a TV show that like each other, it seems to be kind oh, of I feel the exact novelty. same way. <laughs> I feel the exact same way. There's so many, or the comedy of it or whatever, there's so many mm. married couples on TV. That just, I got so tired of married couples that hate each other and all they do is fight yeah. and it's only there for the comedy. But it's like, you know, when they really love each other, that's so that's so nice. <laughs> it feels I feel like it's so rare to to see that. Yeah, and it's so I don't know. It's just very old fashioned. It's very like nineteen fifties to have like uh, the old ball and chain. It's like <laughs> I mean, you don't have to like go to Reno to get a divorce anymore. You can just split up if you don't like each other. Like it's fine. You don't need <laughs> to stay in this like weird sarcastic marriage. <laughs> Um, that's fun that's funny you mentioned the 50s also because that's that's the direction i gave her barbara i was like you know think morticia adams but very because morticia is very like you know macabre and like low and reserved mm. but i was just like you know 
use that character, but the voice, I want like a 50s housewife, like really chipper and like happy sounding. Perky. Yeah, very perky, exactly. Mm. So she's, you know, she's got the macabre character, but a very perky voice. <laughs> oh, hi there. I'm Eleanor, Claudia's mother. Sorry, sometimes I get a little too wrapped up in my work. <laughs> what is it that you do? Oh, my sweet child, I'm a mortician. That's what Barbara went with, and I and I said, "Hey, that works. That's great." She, that, that was her idea to make her perky. So, <laughs> yeah, like if you you know if you look at her on Instagram, she seems to be a naturally quite perky person. Yeah, she is. She's very very sweet, very bubbly, um, always game, very friendly. Yeah. I definitely appreciate uh, something I've noticed about Jeff and Barbara. They are generally seem to be very game for, you know, like uh, being involved in, in indie productions. Cause you know, you're right. You know, they're not at like a, whatever, a Kardashian level of fame, but mm -hmm. um, you know, people in like, genre film circles for instance have a huge amount of love and respect for them um and they're willing to you know put their time and name on you know smaller projects and stuff like that and you know that's really that I always find that very nice I was nervous for a little bit before they both said yes because I was like well I really want both of them you know it'd be awesome if it was just Jeffrey Combs or just Barbara Crampton but like it has to be both of them and that was <laughs> you know until they both when they both said i think barbara said uh uh i got through to her first and she said yes and then i was just like okay like jeffrey please say yes because you know <laughs> it just won't be as cool you know because i really wanted a reanimator you know <laughs> reunion mm. um, and it worked out <laughs> well i think what's funny is that i um the first time i watched the episode i was watching it knowing that 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 was jeff's character but i actually didn't know that that barbara was playing the wife and I was listening to the voice, and I'm like, "That sounds, that sounds familiar." And then <laughs> I was, I was, I was so happy uh, watching it again, you know, like knowing, knowing that that was Bravo, because I'm like, "Oh, that's like a whole other dimension." I love that. Yeah, I was really hoping that it would resonate with you know, horror fans and '80s horror fans. How many cats do you have? Two. Well, I've seen, oh, I, I've seen two so far, and I was like, I wonder how many more there are. Oh yeah, yeah, two to a boy and a girl. Girl Ripley, uh, named after Sigourney Weaver and Alien. Of course. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you can really tell I'm an '80s, <laughs> yeah. '70s, and '80s horror fan. Um, and then Boogie Boy is um, named after the the, the Devo band Devo, uh, the character in Devo. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> like you can tell that I would resonate with Ollie and Scoops because. Oh yeah. Being a weird girl with glasses who has a little. There you go. Um, a little. Yeah, you look. Like you're. That. you're, you're you're like a live action version of them. It's us. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but can I mention a deleted scene? Um, yes. It was originally yeah, going to be the epilogue. Originally, the epilogue was going to be after the slumber party, after the ending credits. And it was going to be showing that the demon is still a little tiny bit inside of Scoops, just to set up maybe like a sequel episode or something. <laughs> um, and it was going to be scoops at a psychiatrist or like a therapist it was going to be dr Katz. you remember that <laughs> yeah. um it just didn't work out scheduling wise but i was going to have dr jonathan Katz, and of course i'm like your last name is perfect um and yeah. it, i was going to have it be in the animation squiggly style um, <laughs> he was going to be himself but a cat version and scoops going like yeah i just like so, you know sometimes i just still hear voices you know, mm -hmm. and it was going to be a reveal that like the demon is still like a, there's like a tiny little sliver of him still in there. Oh my god! Um, and, uh, maybe come, maybe maybe you know, uh, but uh, it just didn't work out timing wise. And the episode was already like very close to being done. And I'm like, uh, if we did this scene at this epilogue, it would delay the episode like like another month or two. And yeah. I don't really want we're kind of already done there. So yeah, we'll just uh <laughs> just yeah. put it out. But yeah, I did I did write the scene at least. It got up to the script stage <laughs> well yeah for those I, I realize now we haven't even we haven't even gone through the episode really but the um the basic parameters of the episode for those who haven't who haven't seen it to be honest listener um pause this and just go watch it they, it's quite short it's a very good it's only show. it's only 11 minutes yeah 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 <laughs> you you know you can you you'll understand so much more about what we're talking about if you just watch it 
Uh, yeah. But it's uh, yes, it's uh, Oli having a uh, slumber party at uh, Claudia. Yeah, um, in the previous episode, they're at the video store. There's a whole other story, but during the events of the previous episode, Ollie at the video store meets um, just there. She was just called the creepy girl, and then um, uh, at the end, they're like, "Let's have a." Or they rented all these videos, and they're like, "Let's have a slumber party." And then the episode ended, and I was like, "That'd be fun to see the slumber party." Yeah, um, you know, like instead of just having it end there. And so I was like, okay, if we're going to be going at to her house, uh, you know, we can't just, it'd be funny, I guess, if her name was just the creepy girl, but mm -hmm. uh, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll probably see her parents and they're not going to call her that. So got to, you know, think of a name for her. And then the parents came into it and then we just, I just went from there. So in the writing. Um, so yeah, so this, this one opens up with Ollie and Scoops arriving at the slumber party and then a whole crazy adventure happens throughout the slumber party. Yeah, where they watch, uh, what is it, like 800, uh, 800 movies of something that seems like sort of earnest films? Yeah, I, I always, uh, I love in shows and cartoons where the main characters have their favorite show or cartoon. You know, at The Simpsons, Bart and Lisa love Itchy and Scratchy or, yeah. you know, stuff like that. So um, uh, when it came time, I can't remember what episode it was, but when it came time to figure out what's Ollie and Scoops' favorite show or movie or whatever i was just like um just thinking of personalities and characters from when i was a kid and i just thought of an earnest like earnest warrell like mm. character um he's just named billy bob and he's just a total hillbilly hick who apparently has you know a thousand movies under his <laughs> repertoire um, oh, yeah. so, um it, at the end of the video store episode of of ollie and scoops um ollie scoops and the creepy girl head to a slumber party with like 800 different movies of billy bobs and so <laughs> the slumber party is them just basically watching 800 movies and um stop me if i'm getting ahead but the last tape of that all those 800 movies turns out to be a possessed tape and that kind of triggers the events of the episode well you know it's a natural stepping stone from this uh for for kids and people watching that to then explore, you know, uh, like the ring universe, other yeah, yeah. possessed uh, videotapes, you know. I, I think that that's, it's really good world building, I think, to have characters that have their own favourite things in shows yeah. that don't necessarily like, they don't need to be a thing that we know of. Like it doesn't need to be a real person. But yeah. having something that's recognisable because I feel like that is something that, kids probably did do in summer parties, you know, sure, sure. More, more so in the States, you know, in the eighties and nineties is watching like these kind of silly films. Probably for me, I'm 36. So for me and my friends, it was more like jackass. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. I'm yeah, 39 years. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's, you know, in terms of like silly physical comedy, that was a big one for me. <laughs> mm. Oh yeah. Everyone had that Tom Green uh, those Tom Green videos and, uh, you know, yeah, that whole jackass uh, early 2000s, you know, shock comedy. Um, I feel like a lot of people our age that, well, hey, that was that was meant for us at the time. Um, oh, yeah. We all at some point got into a shopping trolley and got our friends to, like, push it into a wheelie bin or something. <laughs> um, um, I'll reveal here that um, even the actor that plays Billy Bob is actually um billy bob's just a character and he's actually a very refined englishman um like you know classically shakespearean theater trained actor <laughs> and he just plays billy bob that's the that's his character i have an idea for an episode where the actor who plays billy bob gets canceled a la bill cosby or something and the idea of the episode is ollie having to deal with being a fan of someone who's now been canceled so you know what do i do do i it, it, i know that's a little heady for a kids show mm. but um, very much uh like uh like how do i separate the art from the artist and it's 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 it's, it's about letting go of something you like that has turned out to not be such a good thing well, I think it'll be fine as long as Billy Bob doesn't turn out to be like a child. Oh, yes. Oh, sorry. I forgot to mention. <laughs> the reason he gets canceled is very much a silly thing. Okay. Um, it's something to do with cats. Like, nothing bad. Like, it's something where, like, he likes to, like, 
play pranks on cats or something like that. Mm -hmm. Something where in this world you would you would get canceled for it. And so and so Scoops is very much like, oh yeah, like screw him. And Ollie is like, well, <laughs> Billy Bob's my childhood. And and it's more like, well, who are you gonna choose, Ollie? Like me, your best friend, Scoops, a cat who this guy is like mean to cats, or are you gonna choose like this guy, you know, this this jerk who plays pranks on he like he like I don't know he's like a serial like smushes pies and cats faces or something like that I don't know just something like really Word. ridiculous yeah Word. that doesn't hurt them but you know it's just like oh what a weirdo <laughs> yeah he's a uh, pest and then ultimately of course she chooses scoops and she has to let go you know we all liked Bill Cosby or you know John Kay or whoever and it's like well you gotta let go you know yeah. if they Fuck are him. people who did something really bad so yeah in terms of like your history in sort of like arts and entertainment, have you always worked in animation or have you done other stuff and then you sort of went like animation is the thing I like? Professionally, I've always worked in animation. Um, in college, I went to school for film and uh, digital arts. I guess that was the name of the program. But um, yeah, I went to school for film and uh, video. I always made short films with um, with my best friend, Matt, and my brother, um uh actually matt plays billy bob which is funny um but uh um and then he he helps me write a lot of ollie and scoops episodes but yeah we had our own public access show my brother and uh and matt and i um and uh we always just made you know short comedy videos and stuff like that so i always figured i was going to end up in film and um when i moved out i i always loved animation too had a lot of animation friends and um when i moved out here i was just you know restaurant waiter uh retail stuff like that for a couple years but um i ended up just knowing more people in animation and so i landed in animation and um you know i draw and and show run and everything but um uh in the industry i'm an, i'm an editor in animatic uh animation timer um and uh, editing is the exact same for video as it is for animation so um uh i just you know yeah i fit right in um being an editor already and I edited all of our, you know, uh, public access show videos and comedy shorts and stuff like that. So, yeah, um, gosh, it's been 14 years now of uh, being an animatic editor. And uh, yeah, so professionally, it's always been animation. What do you what do you love about it, I guess, is is the sort of broad question. But like, because I imagine that the freedom of animation would be would be very satisfying, you know, being able to do things that you either wouldn't be able to do it all in live action or would require some sort of, you know, janky CG. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's definitely a big perk to it is just how fun it is. And um, just the freedom of being able to do anything in animation. And um, uh, you know, I love, Hey, I love live action um, and film, but uh, it's kind of the opposite in animation to where um, you film your actors live action. And then in the edit, you know, you're using, you're, 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 you're cobbling together all the takes that you did and trying to make something out of it. Um, in animation, it's the opposite to where you have, as, as long as your hand can draw, you're figuring out what happens up front and then you're drawing it. Um, so you're figuring out what happens first and then you're creating footage to match that idea. Mm. Um, to where in live action, it's different. You know, you're just filming and then whatever you got, you're, you're, you're making something out of that tons and tons of animation is figured out and of the of the jokes of the writing of the story um it, uh, tons of it is figured out in the editing stage there, there, we figured out um it depending on what show i'm on um but uh the ones that come to mind are the ones i've done at disney uh well disney tv animation i was on pickle and peanut and i was on star versus the forces of evil and with those shows especially um they were very much figured out in the editing stage like even yeah. after the storyboards were done um uh, my the directors would end up kind of doing a lot of storyboarding um and revisions after the fact and uh we would spend a lot of time in the edit room like cobbling together like oh you know uh we got an idea of what the character says with these original storyboards but here's like what specifically will happen and here's what specifically they'll say and we'll figure it out there and we'll do scratch um we call 
just temporary record scratch uh, where it's just me or the director voicing the character temporarily until we get the actor in and then the yeah. actor will record their pickup lines to our scratch vocals it's very much like a skeleton you're just kind of cobbling together uh, a, a creature or you know something in its final form and uh you get to have that power it's really it's really fun <laughs> <laughs> phenomenal cosmic power yeah 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 <laughs> Dance, puppets, dance. <laughs> yeah, it's very much like you're you're puppeting what happens, what the characters say and do. <laughs> yeah, I think pe- people just don't, I think, maybe people that don't work in the industry or people that don't know people who work in the industry probably don't realise how much more work there is in animation. Like, it's not just yeah. a matter of, like, filming something and then you've got it. Uh, exactly. It's not just an that- animate button and you press the button and then it's done. So you you mentioned uh, you mentioned vaguely earlier, but um, so you uh, are you like a, a big horror guy in general? I was never really a big horror person growing up, but uh, I don't know. I, I it's it's like so late, but I I kind of just I only sort of stumbled into it maybe ten years ago. I I knew of a lot of stuff like you know Jason and Freddy Krueger and all those guys, hmm. but uh, I just never I don't know. I was uh kind of a sensitive kid I never really uh you know I never really sought out that stuff and then yeah about 10 or 12 years ago I uh you know I can't even remember what the first couple things I saw were but I really gravitated towards 70s and 80s horror I can't do like hostile or like gore like really gory stuff torture porn Um, yeah 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 um and uh I don't know and and anything new is basically just jump scares like that's how horror is mostly nowadays and I don't go for jump scares at all so um yeah I really gravitated towards 70s and 80s stuff um because there was also there was like that kind of camp factor to it that I really Mm. enjoyed um it never really took itself too seriously all the greats, um, of course, Reanimator fit, mm. fits from Beyond fit right in there. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. I feel like from Beyond specifically, um, I feel like more people would say that that's more of a sci-fi film. Sure. Um, even though, like, obviously the overlap in horror and sci-fi is, can get a bit muddy and whatever, I guess that's also why I find it kind of easy to recommend a lot of Jeff's films uh, mm. to to people who, even if they don't like horror, because some yeah. of them, especially things like Reanimator, like, you know, like certain, um, look, certain effects are never going to like age as well. And so it's not like a lot of the things look super realistically gory. Like they mm-hmm. do look, they do look fake and that's fine because it's a film and we know that. Um, uh, and also like a lot of his films are really fun. They're not like upsettingly scary. They're just like yeah. kind of creepy, but they're, you know, they're a good time. Yeah. I, I, I've heard a lot of people, I've heard it described more as a comedy than a horror in recent years. Oh, um, yeah. I just saw it at the Egyptian theater like a, like six weeks ago, two months ago, maybe. Nice. Um, Barbara and Jeffrey in attendance and the theater was cracking up. <laughs> mm. um, yeah. yeah, that's what's crazy. The idea that Stuart Gordon at the time didn't either think it was going to be funny or didn't want it to be funny. It's like, it's inherently yeah. a kind of a silly premise. And I think that that's probably why Bride of Reanimator is so much more deliberately funny because yeah. they, <laughs> you know, they realize how much comedy you can get out of it and what a good comic performer Jeff is as well. Like he's, he's so slapstick in the sequel. It's kind of yeah. ridiculous. Um, and um, There's a lot of slapstick moments in the first one too, but um, since being a cat owner, the cat scene is a little tough. Because I'm just, I just, and it's a black cat, which I have. Oh. So I'm just like, oh, it's a little, I, you know, I know, but uh, <laughs> it hits a little differently after being a cat owner. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, I, I generally, uh, I watch a lot of horror movies and I'm very good with horror movies. Like I don't get scared or anything, but whenever animals, yeah, with, yeah. Or, or even if like a dog is sad, yeah. scene, I'm like, That's never fun. That, that has upset me. Yeah. I don't want- it's never fun to... when an animal gets hurt. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's so often like so predictable. Like 
oh, look at this um, look at this charming all American family who are moving to a new house in the woods and they're bringing their trusty, well loved family dog. That dog is going to yeah. die immediately. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so Reanimator, was that the first, like, Jeff project that you saw? Hmm. I think I saw him on Star Trek growing up. Oh, that was cool. the first time I saw him was one of those uh, appearances. Yeah, I think I think I would say that's a safe bet. Um, and then when there's only so many movies a, uh, a director or, or an artist has, I try to, like, you know, when there's a limit, I try to sprinkle them uh out so i don't you know watch every single thing that they've done and then have nothing left to look forward to uh so i mean i i obviously have no idea what that's like the the thing about jeff specifically and why this podcast is relatively easy to do is because i mean look he is getting on but he still does work so yeah yeah he's always got stuff on the horizon yeah there's there there, there is a few little things that i'm saving because i'm like you know you can't do you can't do all the classics up top you know sure yeah um, yeah, I, I try. I, I try to not, you know, rush and see everything, just so I always have a little something to look forward to. Um, uh, I was speaking mostly for artists and directors who aren't with us anymore, like Stuart Gordon. Um, mm. uh, David Lynch is actually my favorite director of all time, um, and uh, so I, I really took my time watching his uh, oeuvre, uh, just because I didn't want to run out. <laughs> Well, yeah, because even though he's been working for a long time, I like I don't know as much about David Lynch, but I feel like he has a relatively sparse filmography compared to like really prolific guys who are like one movie a year, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. he's sort of I mean, done like those tentpole films. Yeah, <laughs> he um, and like Kubrick, um, definitely like quality over quantity. Very off topic, but I saw a show. So the um, the sort of comedy the comedy festival has just happened here and there was uh, an actor came out and did a very uh horror stephen king inspired <laughs> play um and she mentions just as a throwaway line in her show that stephen king has written something like 270 books or something like that yeah yeah and like i was like it can't be that much surely it can't <laughs> be that much that's so many yeah like that's just that's that's an insane output i guess that's what he does he just all he does is write he's just a machine you know just a writing machine i wish i could write that much <laughs> well i don't know i mean how often do you think he gets like burnt out and he just like has no ideas sure. left and stuff you know or you know repeats himself um if you've written that much stuff you're bound to repeat yourself at some point yeah it's like oh you know i'll grab something from book four no one's going to remember that you know? <laughs> So what do you have sort of, uh, what do you have sort of like in the pipeline, like not just things that you are going to do, but like, even if it's like a pipe dream, like what are some things that you would really like want to do in animation? Uh, I I, uh, I would love to branch out and direct. Um, I already direct my own stuff, but I'm just talking about my, my, my day job in the industry. Uh, I love editing, but I don't know. I don't want to be 50 and still be editing other on other people's stuff, you know? Mm. Uh, in terms of Ollie and Scoops, um, I I have so many episode ideas. I have so many. Um, there's I, I I have uh gosh at least five more episodes are already written. Two more episodes are recorded. I just have to. Uh, I I currently just need to kind of. I'm building up the funds to be able to afford to make more in terms of paying the animators and all that. Mm. Uh, you know, I could keep making all as long as it, it's as long as I get the money, I could keep making all in scoops for quite a while. So I'd love to keep making them, um, whether it's on my own, like I've been doing, or whether it's a studio purchasing the rights and making it be a, a studio. I'm I'm totally ready for more. I have like a, just a list of episode ideas that, uh, <laughs> you know, that reach at least into episode maybe 30 or 40. And I got even more than that. So a deep well of Ollie and Scoops. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Think of the endless capers that a that a little girl and a cat can get into. Right? Exactly. I mean, they can yeah. go anywhere. They got the world at their feet. The one the one thing you can definitely say about Herbert West is that he would not be a good dad or a good husband. Exactly. Yeah. 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 He, I mean, he's not even interested in love, dating, anything like that. 
Um, no, <laughs> having a girlfriend or a wife, he would probably just consider consider her being in the way. Yeah, I think the closest thing he would have to Morticia is Dan, which, I mean, there's a fair amount of um, writing and fan art to that effect on the internet. But um, <laughs> I love cats. God, I you know I just <laughs> I um I really don't I really don't know what I would do what I would do without without my little guy. And I have realized now that I'm wearing a t-shirt that I made of my previous cat. Oh, um, yeah? Oh. And it says, Dream, oh. says Dreamboat because uh, oh. he was a weird looking guy. Um, <laughs> was he missing an eye? Or... Uh, no, he just had a okay. sort of slightly um, scrunchy, crunchy face. Um, <laughs> he, was, he was very senior and he... Um, he sort of became like very slightly internet famous, and so huh. I, I made like uh, I made like merch. <laughs> Aww. <him>. Um, <laughs> when but, I started making Ollie and Scoops, I uh, a lot of people were saying like, "Oh, so you must have a cat of your own." I actually didn't have them have these guys yet um, oh. until maybe like a year into making Ollie and Scoops, and then I finally got Ripley. Um, I got Ripley the day they told us to stop coming into work because of the pandemic. Oh um, wow! Yeah, March thirteenth is when I got her, and uh, I left work. I, I was at Netflix at the time, and I left work an hour early to go pick up Ripley from the girl I was, uh, I was, uh, the, who was fostering her. And uh, when I got home with Ripley, I got, I had the email saying, "Hey, um, for at least the next two weeks, we're not coming in any. We're not coming in to work." Oh, so. fortuitous timing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. If you're gonna um, be inside a lot, you might as well have a cat. Yeah, and then about a month went by, and uh, I just noticed that whenever I was, you know, busy with work or had to run an errand or something, I just felt really bad for her being all alone. So mm. it's like, oh, I think we need another buddy. And then I got Boogie Boy here. For for scoops in particular, what do you what who who or what do you think about when you sort of you know write him and stuff? Like, are you looking at you know the sort of like classic double acts of 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 times gone gone by because he's sort of like um he's more the who we talk like the straight man in yeah in, but you know the straight man still gets to be funny but you know he's he's got to be a little bit of a of a reason reason mm -hmm. setting scoops really isn't based on anyone um basically besides me i mean i try <laughs> to put a lot of myself in my main characters um, whether it's Jeffrey and Sarah and Too Loud or Ollie and Scoops, basically they're two halves of me. Um, and if you put Ollie and Scoops together, essentially you get me. If you put Jeffrey and Sarah together, you get me. Uh, and Scoops is definitely, out of the two of them, he's probably the one with the most faults, I guess, to where he's um, a little narcissistic. Um, <laughs> uh, definitely he's usually the reason that the trouble or the conflict in the episode starts. A lot of the times um, it's kind of all about him or he, he, he really be he very much wants to be kind of the popular kid or the popular cat. Um, um, sort of acts like sort of a, a bigger deal than he actually is. Um, <laughs> especially when he's in, when they're in the cat world, you know, he, he, he kind of acts like very much that, like he's like the, the, a big member of the party and all the other, you know, all the other strays are just like, Oh, that's that, you know, he's a domesticated cat. So all the strays kind of look at scoops as like a joke or the dorky kid at the party who's trying to be really cool. Yeah. yeah I don't, <laughs> I don't know what, I don't character. know what that's like. I've never felt like that in my life. <laughs> that's pretty much his character. Um, every, every good, well-rounded, well-written character has, you know their 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 wants and their and their need what do they want but and then ultimately what do they end up needing and for scoops he wants popularity he wants to be the the coolest cat around um but what he needs is uh at the end of the day to realize that you know he's got ollie as his best friend and that's all he really needs is just ollie um and he he learns that most episodes that's uh his arc is is what he ends up learning. I think that's a nice the nice thing at the center of any comedy duo is that they have to they have to love each other. Exactly. Like, you know, Ollie and Scoops very much complete each other, and um, they both wouldn't admit it. But if one if one of the other wasn't there, 
the other one would be completely lost. And you know what? In in that way, they are very much like the like the Herbert and Dan of the animation world. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I love that. I love I love that connection. <laughs> um, I don't know. There was just there was just something very cute about the about the the fact that uh, Scoops would join them for the slumber party. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know. There's just there's just something nice about um, you know, even though he's a cat, he yeah. um, you know, <laughs> he's he, very he included. He hangs out, he he eats pizza, he likes movies. Yeah. You know. He's just a guy. Oh yeah. Um he, he's uh, just he's just like any of us, you know. <laughs> just one of the boys. He's just a boy. He's a little boy. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything that you want to share about Jeff before we wrap up? Obviously this is an audio podcast, but if there's any way to show like the couple pictures that we took, um he was a very fun guy. Uh, I don't know why there was a bicycle there at that part <laughs> of the studio, but that picture of us, they were both, and, and, and the both of them together, I mean, we recorded them together. So, um, you know, they went back, what, 35 years, maybe even more. So yeah. um, they were, it was like, you know, yeah, they're old friends. So it was a total pleasure. Um, and it wasn't, quiet or cold or nervous at all they were just two old friends you know recording a cartoon together and um it, it really it, it made me feel you know a lot more comfortable um i don't really get you know nervous nervous um when recording uh or or even yeah meeting <laughs> someone that i'm a huge fan of and they're coming in to record for my cartoon but um you know it, yeah it's definitely a plus if they're you know embracing the silliness and uh are just you know fun to hang out with um which is what barbara and jeffrey were absolutely well uh anything to plug oh um yeah so all in scoops uh cool. it's just um and, and my dreamworks series too loud they both live on uh um uh nico animation is the youtube channel but if you just youtube search all in scoops or too loud or my name nico colaleo you'll find everything um and i'm on twitter and instagram also just my name nico colaleo um yeah pretty easy to find and if you look at my imdb you can see all the other shows that i've worked on lots of stuff for titmouse netflix disney nickelodeon people can do a deep dive if they want <laughs> sure <laughs> <laughs> um well thank you thank you for, for my pleasure thank for you Yes, well done on Ollie and Scoops. I really, um, I didn't, uh, unfortunately, I didn't know about it until I was like going through Jeff's filmography and obviously watching everything. But it was so nice to find and, you know, just going through like other episodes and just, as I said, just watching this like nice cartoon that isn't like going to bum me out. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. I've been, I've been, all the, I, I, I like reading the comments. Um, I, I've gotten pretty lucky to where, um, I, I I barely, if ever, gotten anything negative, um, but a lot of the comments, uh, I just like being connected with the fans like that. But mm. um, I really get a lot that uh, Ollie and Scoops feels like an early '90s Nicktoon or um, you know an old Cartoon Network show. Um, yeah. Everybody has described that as feeling very, very like cozy, like it's a very cozy show that feels like it. It really brings them back to being a, you know those those '90s cartoons and being a kid. So um, I'm really glad that it uh, feels that way for people. Um, that's what I'm aiming for. So, um, uh, and I, you know, I'm one of you. I'm one of those kids. Uh, uh, I grew up with, you know, Rocco's Modern Life and Ren and Stimpy and the and the Cartoon Network shows, Powerpuff Girls, Dexter's Lab, all that stuff. So you can't help but be inspired by like classics like that because they were just so integral to, you know, yeah. people of a certain age's childhood. Um, Absolutely, yeah.